I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we'll be talking about daily issues and timing. First of all, I would like to thank Pastor Jay and El Matebula for such a wonderful platform to come here again and talk to everyone about I would like to thank Pastor Jay and El Matebula for the wonderful platform given right now so that I can share with you guys what God has placed in my heart and I would like to thank Pastor T and N Bogota as well for the wonderful opportunity. So today we'll be talking about daily issues and timing as I've said. So we'll be going through Luke chapter 15 verse 11 to 32. And we'll be also going through Luke 10, verse 38 to 42. So let's open our Bibles and go to Luke chapter 15. But before that, last Sunday, Pastor um, Tim Bogota was speaking about how fathers should act towards their children. So I've got to realize that there is a link between how we are with our fathers on earth and the father in heaven so the relationship that we have with our father on earth we tend to project it to our heavenly father so i want us to go through this famous passage actually then we'll get to discuss as to what exactly did i find on that so let's go ahead to luke chapter 15 Verse 11, starting from verse 11 until 32. So verse 11, it says, Jesus went on to say there was once a man who had two sons. The younger one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. So the man divided his property between his two sons. After a few days, the younger son sold his part of the property and left home with the money. He went to a country far away where he wasted his money in reckless living. He spent everything he had. Then a severe famine spread over that country and he was left without a thing. So he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him out to his farm to take care of the pigs. He wished he could fill himself with the bean pods the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything to eat. At last, he came to his senses and said, All my father's hired workers have more than they can eat, and here I am about to starve. I will get up and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and started back to his father. So what I want to talk about here is that this younger son, he left home, right? And then when the Bible says he came to his senses, I wonder what kind of senses are those? Because he started rehearsing this speech that he's planning to go to tell his father when he eventually gets back home. That he wants to say to his father, I'm no longer fit to be your son, but instead I should work for you. So that's how he thinks that he doesn't deserve to be a son since he left home and he had to come back. And he had to come back due to the fact that he used all his money and he wasted every single cent right so now he thinks that just because he was doing all those things he's no longer deserving to be called a son but when we look at how our father is towards us we get to understand that by us being born again we are automatically the children of god so we do not have to work in order to be called the son of god or the daughters of god 
So our works have nothing to do with our role in God. So let's further go to what happens as he comes to his senses. So verse 20 says, so he got up and started back to his father. He was still a long way from home when his father saw him. His heart was filled with pity and he ran threw his arms round his son and kissed him. Father, the son said, I have sinned against God and against you. I'm no longer fit to be called your son. But the father called his servants. Hurry, he said, bring the best rope and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Then go and get the prize calf and kill it and let us celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. And so the feasting began. So now what I'm getting to understand is that the father didn't even pay attention to the speech that he rehearsed that he's no longer deserving to be a son anymore. But instead the father was happy that the son, instead of, sorry, it keeps on interrupting, instead of taking into account that the son has said this and that, he was just happy that he is home. So he made a feast to celebrate the homecoming of his son. So in as much as this son was having daddy issues because he thought that in order for him to be eventually somebody's son, he has to earn it. Now the father shows him that no, that doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter at all, actually. You are my son, irrespective of what you have done. Hence the word of God says that there is nothing that we can do that will separate us from the love of God. So there is nothing that we can do in order to make sure that God loves us more or not. But by us being saved, we are the children of God and he loved us way before we could even learn to love ourselves. So there is nothing that we can do in order to make sure that Eventually God loves us because he loves us either we do wrong or not even though he does not like us doing wrong But he loves us anyway Hence his love is unconditional So let's go to verse 25. It says in the meantime the elder son was out in the field on his way back When he came close to the house, he heard the music and dancing So you can just imagine I think every single one of us has been in this situation where you get to like you were at work in terms of saving you've been praying you've been fasting you've been doing all that god wants you to do but instead because of the mentality that you have you wonder how does somebody who hasn't been faithful to god obedient to god goes wherever they are and they come back and eventually they get blessed so i wonder what was going on in his mind that how come I've been with the father for so many years, but I've never had a feast on my behalf. So let's hear what he says. Verse 26, it says, so he called one of the servants and asked him, what's going on? Your brother has come back home. The servant answered, and your father has killed the prize calf because he got him back safe and sound. The elder brother was so angry that he would not go into the house. So the father came out and begged him to come in. Let's look at verse 25. It says, In the meantime, the elder son was out in the field on his way back. When he came close to the house, he heard the music and dancing. He was tired. He was coming from work, probably all sweating and everything. And he's hearing all these things. And after he's asking the servant of what is going on, he hears that the younger son is now back. So all of a sudden, the younger, brother, the younger brother is being celebrated, but he was never celebrated as he thinks, right? Okay, let's go to verse 27. It says, your brother has come back home, the seven answered, and your father has killed the prize cow because he got him back safe and sound. The elder brother was so angry that he would not go into the house, so his father came out and begged him to come in, but he answered his father, Look, all these years I have worked for you like a slave. I have worked for you like a slave and I have never disobeyed your orders. What have you given me? 
not even a goat for me to have a feast with my friends. So look now at the mentality of the elder son. He's also having daddy issues. So daddy issues not only occur to people whom are far from the father or whom are far from God, but even the people in the church, they still continue to have such issues as well. So here it shows us that the elder son was next to the father for all these years, yet inside he has been struggling with this, that he is working so hard for the father, but nothing is being done or given to him. So now he gets to speak and he says, I've been working for you like a slave, but you didn't even bother to make a bribe for me. You didn't even bother to give me a goat to go and eat with my friends. But here comes your son who disobeyed you and you are throwing this for him. Okay, it says, but this son of yours wasted all your property on prostitutes and when he comes back home, you kill the price cow for him. My son, the father answered, you are always here with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be happy because your brother was dead, but now he's alive and he was lost but now he has been found. Are we celebrating when we have those who were lost into the world coming back to Christ? Or are we quick to talk about, I've been here with you, Lord. I've been doing this and this, but you've never blessed me. How do we understand this? The father is telling this elder son that everything I have is yours. So it means you can have anything that you want. You do not have to work like a slave in order for me to bless you. Everything I have is yours. Christ Jesus already died for us. We are caught as with him, right? So it means anything God can give us according to his. So we do not have to find ourselves thinking, you know what, I have to work like a slave in order for God to bless me. That's how the mindset was of the elder son. And that's how the mindset was for the youngest son as well. He thought now that he took the inheritance and left, and now he's back, he has to work in order to earn being a son. But you are a son or a daughter of God. Either you do right or wrong after being saved, you do not have to earn being his son or his daughter. Hence, I found it very important that last week it was shared on Sunday that fathers should be able to be a good example to their kids. They should be able to provide for their kids. They should do this and that. What I loved about that is because there is a link between your earthly father and your heavenly father. If your earthly father never like, complimented you or given you anything good to think about i tend to think that if there is also a father even though he's in heaven probably he's the same so we get we need to understand that our heavenly father does not require us to work for righteousness but we work from righteousness because of his son so we do not have to find ourselves thinking i have to work in order for me to become god's daughter or son but instead you are already his son or his daughter. All you have to do is to work, not because you want to be righteous or more holy than somebody else, but to work in honor of God because you love doing that. Hence, it is a problem if you find yourself complaining, why am I the only one serving and other people are sitting down? Why are you serving in the first place? Where is your heart posture? Okay, now let's go to Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Okay, verse 38, it says, As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him in her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat down at the feet of the Lord and listened to his teaching. Martha was upset over all the work she had to do. So she came and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? 
Tell her to come and help me. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled over so many things, but just one is needed. Mary has chosen the Mary has chosen the right thing and it will not be taken away from her. What I've got to learn there is timing. That in as much as Martha was doing right by trying to serve, but it was at the wrong time. And probably she assumed that maybe Jesus was hungry or was thirsty or he needed something. So I think it would have been better if by the time he came in, she was like, can I offer you juice? Can I offer you water? Can I offer you coffee? Then she would be aware of what Jesus needed. And probably he would have said, no, I don't need anything. Then she would have saved herself all the frustration that she was in. So it is a problem to assume and go along and work in line with that assumption that you've made. Now, Mary was smart enough to know that, you know what? Jesus came to our home. I cannot find myself going up and down. It is time to sit down and stay at the feet of Jesus and get fed by him. So that's what she did. But Martha was out there, who knows, making some bread, some sandwiches, some whatever there. And she got frustrated because she wasn't assisted. But Jesus said to her, Mary chose one thing which is right. So she chose to stay at the feet of Jesus. So about that, what I want us to learn from that is that there is timing for everything. In as much as you are doing a good thing, but there is time for that. It's like, let's say maybe the word is being preached at church and you go and take a broom and start sweeping. It is a good thing, but it's not the time for that. So Martha didn't understand that there is time for saving and there is time for being fed. And besides, I tend to say to people, sorry, that you can only pour from a cup that is filled. Love yourself first. And what I mean by that is you can be able to love somebody else if only you love yourself. So you can only be able to give if you have something filled within you. And in that moment, you are able to give from a place of abundance and of passion, such that even if that person doesn't give anything back, you are still fine because you are not giving because you are in lack. But when you start getting frustrated, it's time to check if ever are you giving from a place of fulfillment or you are giving from a place of lack. Because at the end of the day, you cannot give what you do not have. So there is time for everything. Mary understood that it is time for her to get fed, not to save. So that's what I wanted to remind us. So that in terms of daily issues, God, you're already his son or his daughter. You do not have to work for that. You have to serve God because you love to, because you honor God, not because you want to seem more righteous than somebody else or more holier than somebody else or trying to earn the role of being a daughter or a son. It doesn't happen that way. So, and also with timing, we have to know when to serve and when to be fed. In as much as it is a good thing to serve, there is time for that. And in as much as there is it is a good thing to be fed. There is time for that. It can be a time of saving and you do something else. It can be a time of being fed and you do something else. Unless you are the one feeding people um, while the other ones are being saved. That's what I wanted to say. I hope this was enlightening to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and for lending me your evening. Have yourselves a good evening. Thank you.